I'm Dan Cederholm, and throughout this video I'll be talking about what it means to apply the concept of being bulletproof to your design work on the web. Being a good craftsman on the web is about continually asking questions. How flexible are your designs? What happens when text size is adjusted? What happens when images or CSS are turned off? What if one paragraph becomes two? Does your design adapt to that, or does it fall apart? So the details of good craftsmanship aren't always obvious. Like a well-made piece of furniture, you might not notice how well-made it is until you start using it. Like pulling the drawer out of a well-made piece of furniture and noticing the dovetail joints. Now we can apply that to the web as well. Good craftsmanship on the web, for me, has always been about details that aren't always obvious, too. And those details often lead to flexibility and adaptability. It's also an exciting time to be designing for the web. Browsers are implementing new and involving standards more rapidly. We can use what I am calling progressive enrichment to apply advanced CSS and CSS3 properties that work in browsers today. So I've developed 10 guidelines to keep in mind while you're designing. These are important factors to consider when designing for flexible interfaces with CSS. These are the sometimes invisible details that matter most when creating bulletproof designs. And it's details like these that set good web design apart from great web design. So throughout the video, I'll be referring to a fictional test case uh, for the Tugboat Coffee Company. This was a template I designed for my latest book, Handcrafted CSS. Now, you don't need to own the book to follow along. However, if you do own handcrafted CSS or bulletproof web design, this video acts as a unique bridge between the two. So whether you're a web designer, a decision maker for your team, or a graphic designer wanting to learn more about the fluidity that's required when designing for the web, after this video, you'll come away with the tools needed to create reliable, flexible, bulletproof designs. So. I thought it's, we'd start out by um, talking about the term bulletproof and what it is I mean by that term, bulletproof. Um, it's kind of a weird uh, term to use when applied to, to web design, right? Um, there was a couple years ago where you know, I was sitting in my backyard kind of um, thinking about how it was, it was excellent that everyone was using web standards um, more and more, you know, CSS and semantic markup. People were sort of jumping on board with it and they're really getting fired up about it. Um, and it was, while it was great that people were using um, web standards more, they weren't actually, um, they weren't paying attention to flexibility as much as they could. And so that's where I came up with this term bulletproof to sort of explain this extra level of detail that, uh, go, that can go into web design uh, with standards. So what, when I'm talking about bulletproof, I'm talking about uh, worst case scenarios that can happen with your designs. Um, the, the concept of embracing flexibility as well. Uh, and also designs that are difficult to break, and we'll sort of get into what that means in a bit. And sort of protecting your designs, um, understanding what can happen over the course of someone viewing it in different environments. Um, and this is all part of being a web craftsman as well. Um, this is this extra level of detail that, uh, that can turn um, you know, good web design into great web design. So like a, a police officer might um, strap on a bulletproof vest, they're still vulnerable in certain spots, right? Um, so being 100% bulletproof isn't, isn't, really a, isn't really a possibility. So um, while the, the term bulletproof is sort of this strong word, right? No design could be 100% bulletproof, you know, and, and sort of one solution fits all, right? This is more... Uh, of guidelines to keep in mind while you're designing. And it's something to strive for. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind while you're working um, to make that extra little, little bit count. So um, I'm going to talk about some real world examples of what it means to be bulletproof outside the web world to try to, try to explain this a little bit more. Um, there's this term, the baker's dozen, that um, where a baker would uh, bake an extra cookie in to their to their dozen, so like a thirteenth cookie, and so the uh, in case one of the cookies breaks, the baker will bake an extra an extra cookie in there. Right. So they're thinking ahead of what might happen, some sort of worst case scenario, 
and they'll still have their dozen intact if that does happen. Um, there's a warehouse just down the street from, from where we are here at, at Simple Bits in Salem that uh, was built a couple of years ago. And uh, it's kind of a peculiar building. It's a storage facility, and they built in uh, windows, window wells, to the whole building. And, um, but they ended up covering them up because it's a storage facility. It doesn't need windows. Uh, and come to find out, the reason they did that is because they, they sort of thought ahead about what this building could be later on. It might, always, might not always be a storage facility. And uh, if it's not, they could probably knock out those areas where there's windows and actually have windows in the building. Um, so sort of planning for future use. There are uh, bulletproof pants that exist. Um, <laughs> these are... Uh, this is a, a, a real product, right, where you, the more you eat, the, the, uh, the waistband can expand a, a, as you need it, right? Um, this is something I probably need at this point. Um, they're called comfort equipped. Um, so if you're familiar with, like, the sliding doors concept in CSS, this is sort of like a real, uh, real live version of sliding doors uh, in a pair of pants. Go figure. Um, so... There are three ways of uh, being bulletproof, really, if we, if we sort of recap here. There's, uh, you could be bulletproof in terms of content, um, uh, text size, if the text size changes, if the content amount changes. This is sort of the, the pants concept, right? So flexibility, being able to breathe. Um, there's also uh, the possibility of being bulletproof in terms of editing, uh, the, the ease of maintenance on uh, a design, um, is another aspect of, of being bulletproof. And this sort of goes along with the, the building, right? Sort of planning for future use. It might not always be uh, a building without windows. It could be a different type of building later on. Um, and you can also be bulletproof in terms of environment, right? So uh, depending on which device or browser is accessing your design, um, the environment may change and how that design reacts to that environment is something to keep in mind, right? This is sort of the baker's dozen example, uh, planning ahead for something that goes wrong, like a cookie breaks, it, you still have that, that full dozen. So throughout uh, this video, we're going to be um, referencing the Tugboat Coffee Company quite a bit. Um, and this is a, a template design that, I, that I've used in my latest book, um, Handcrafted CSS. Uh, and so we're going to be applying um, some integrity tests and some different ways of uh, testing the, the bulletproofness of this particular design.